My name is Rachel Cousins, and today I will be walking you through a demo showcasing how to call various GPI v5 APIs in the API sandbox using the Swift SDK. We are providing this app open source on GitHub and welcome you to clone or fork it to follow along. Let's begin on the reference page of the developer portal. Here we have a section on the Swift SDK. We can click the link to view the page that gives us a more detailed explanation on that offering. The link to our demo application can be found here as well. Looking at the repository, we can see some instructions in the README. Under Getting Started, we have a list of prerequisites for running the app. This application is a Java app that is built with Maven. We recommend Maven version 3.5 or above for building. This app has two key dependencies that must be downloaded from Developer Portal. These are the Swift SDK and the Swift Security SDK. In previous releases, the Swift SDK and Swift Security SDK were bundled together. These libraries are downloaded and installed separately now so that they can be used independently. For the purpose of this demo application, we will use both. In addition to these requirements, we will need to create an app on Developer Portal to get a set of app credentials that will be used to authenticate against the API sandbox. Let's return to Developer Portal to set up some of these prerequisites. Along with the product description, the Swift SDK page contains software deliverables and additional materials for download. As you can see on the right, in order to download the Swift SDK, you must be logged in. Click the link to head to the sign-in page. From the sign-in page, you have the option to sign in with your Swift.com credentials or your Developer Portal account. Now that we are logged in, let's download the packages. For this demo, I am taking the latest of both Swift SDK and Swift Security SDK. Once these have been downloaded, unzip them. Then we need to navigate to your download of Swift SDK on the command line. From there, I will be using the install script, install.sh. This script will install the Swift SDK jar in your local M2 directory. The same must be done for the Swift Security SDK. Navigate to that directory and run the install script to install the jar file in your M2 directory. Let's return to Developer Portal to create an app. Along the top navigation bar, click on the link called My Apps. This takes you to a page containing all of your apps on the developer portal. Click Add a new app to create an app. For the purpose of this demo, I will be naming this app GPI v5 demo. Under product, we are going to select GPI API. Then we can click create app to finish creating our app. Once our app is successfully created, we can click on it to be taken to a summary page for our app. This page is where your credentials are located, the consumer key and consumer secret generated for your app. Let's return to the GitHub repository to take a look at the code. Starting with the POM file, we can see that this project uses the Maven assembly plugin to build a jar with all dependencies. Looking further down, you can see in our list of dependencies the two jars we installed earlier. The Swift Security SDK contains the methods to handle API requests to generate, refresh, and revoke OAuth access tokens. The Swift SDK is used to create the requests and process the responses received from APIs, such as GPI. Next, we will take a look at our configurations. This demo app provides two configuration files under the config directory. The one ending in "-fp.yaml supports the use of forward proxies. Let's take a look at config-swift-connect.yaml in more detail. The first value of note is call timeout sec, which sets a timeout for read and write. We have this set to 10 seconds, which is the default value. Then there is the xswift signature header. This denotes the name of the signature passed as a header for non-repudiation purpose. We have this set to the default value. Under API Gateway, we have put the URL of the API sandbox, sandbox.swift.com. 
The trust alias is the TLS certificate of the API sandbox. The next two values are the consumer key and consumer secret. Update these with the credentials taken from the summary of the app we created. Under authorization service, we set the audience to the URL for authorization in the API sandbox. Here the scope is set to swift.apitracker slash full viewer. The next few sections are not within the scope of this demo. If you are interested in what these configurations should look like, please take a look at the Swift SDK configuration guide included in the package we unzipped earlier. For the services section, we will not be changing these paths. Skipping down to the security footprints, this is where we set the location of the client certificate. A self-signed certificate called demo.jks is included in this repository under the config directory. The software certificate has a simple password and the alias self-signed. In order to create a secure connection to the API Sandbox, the API Sandbox Trust Store was added to the client certificate's chain of trust. Within our code base, let's navigate to the session implementation. Here we have two files, Sandbox API Session.java and Session IMPL.java. These additional files were created to showcase how the session is created using the Swift Security SDK jar file. In the Sandbox API Session class, we can see the configuration file being read and processed into objects that can be manipulated by methods from the security SDK. In the Session IMPL class, we can see the constructor. This is going to take in those objects and create the session. Now let's take a look at our demo app.java file. In the main method, we created a Sandbox API Session in order to get an access token. Then we set up the display of a menu to select one of the nine API endpoints we have implemented in this demo. When the user selects an API, we set up the respective API call using methods from the Swift SDK. For example, let's look at the Customer Credit Transfer Status Confirmation API. This function takes in our session object so that we can authenticate with the access token. We create the request body using some sample static values. We configure the API client with the information we have created, and then we send the request. It's time to build the app and try it out. We can take this URL from the repository and clone the project locally using the command line. To build, we are going to move into the directory we just cloned and enter maven clean install. The build was a success! Make sure to update the configuration file with the consumer key and consumer secret from the app you created. Now we can run the application. Let's copy the run command from our readme. There are two commands here, with the difference being which configuration we are pulling from. Since we are not using forward proxies in this tutorial, we will take the first command. After pasting it in the command line, we can watch the application start up. Through the logs that are printed to the console, we can tell that the application has successfully found and parsed our configurations. At the bottom, we see our session has been established and our access token information has been printed. Now we can use this token to make a call to any of the endpoints. Select an API by entering a number from 1 to 9 and pressing Enter. Let's select 1 for Customer Credit Transfer Status Confirmation. We can see the request URL and body, followed by the response. After each call has been processed, the app will print the menu again so that you may select another API or exit the app by typing in Buy. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. If you have any further questions, please reach out to our support email displayed on screen, and we will be happy to help.